Hi, my name is Tiana Tilly, and I'm the Director of Pharmacy Innovation and Professional Affairs at Whole Health Pharmacy Partners. Many pharmacies are wondering if they should suspend immunization services during COVID-19. Ultimately, this will be a pharmacy by pharmacy and patient by patient consideration, but I'll walk you through some things to consider when making this assessment. The first is the pharmacy environment and workload demands as well as staffing levels should be considered. The second is assessing the patient for their risk of COVID-19. Patients who have symptoms of COVID-19, who have recent travel history, or who have close contacts with those who have symptoms of COVID-19 should not be provided immunization services at this time. It's important to remember that even patients who are asymptomatic could have COVID-19, so an assessment of the patient's risk should still be undertaken, and if immunization services are provided, appropriate PPE should be donned. It's important to consider that immunization delays are an option for pharmacies. Regardless of time between doses, interrupting the vaccine series does not impact the ultimate level of protection that the patient receives once the series is complete. This is because the antibody concentration that's achieved is still achieved once the full schedule is complete. That means that pharmacies may elect to delay or postpone immunizations within a multi-dose series. For example, with herpes zoster, instead of following the usual zero and then two to six month later second dose, there is an option to use a zero and then 12 month later second dose. Similarly, for HPV vaccines in individuals over 14, instead of the regular zero, two, and six month vaccine schedule, a pharmacist could follow a zero, six, and 12 month vaccine schedule. Note that this is not the case for certain vaccines where interrupting the schedule could lead to lower levels of protection. This is the case in cholera, traveler's diarrhea, and post-exposure prophylaxis rabies vaccines. If you decide to delay immunizations, keep in mind that you should add a flag to the patient's profile so that once COVID-19 has passed, you are able to follow up with them to ensure their full immunization series is complete. Alternatively, you can run a query on your dispensing software after COVID-19 for vaccines that are part of a multi-dose vaccine series and follow up with patients who may have received one but not all of the doses within a series. There are also situations where providing immunizations could be appropriate. This is the case, for example, in patients who are you, you are concerned that you may lose to follow up. For example, patients who may lose private drug coverage because of loss of employment secondary to COVID-19, where financial barriers may then prevent immunizations if they're not dispensed and provided now. This could also be the case in patients who now have a heightened awareness of the benefits of vaccines because of the media attention surrounding COVID-19 and vaccines. It's a great opportunity to optimize their protection and ensure they're up to date on their vaccine series. And you may lose this opportunity later when there's less media attention around the benefits of vaccines. Additionally, patients who can't avoid travel should still be provided travel vaccines. Lastly, certain patients who are high risk for vaccine preventable diseases should be immunized if there's a risk of them acquiring the vaccine preventable disease between now and when the vaccine would be delivered if it's postponed. For example, in patients who have had recurrent herpes zoster, if you delay the immunization, they may actually have another recurrence between now and maybe a year from now. Similarly, patients who are at high risk for pneumonia could end up with pneumonia, a bacterial pneumonia, if they are not immunized, which ultimately could potentially cause damage to the lungs and increase their risk for COVID-19. In patients who you decide to provide immunization services to, remember to wear appropriate personal protective equipment as you will be coming in close contact with them and are potentially at risk for droplet and contact exposure. It's also important to remember to wash your hands before and after donning personal protective equipment and to only use personal protective equipment on that patient. 
So for example, if you've been wearing gloves throughout the pharmacy, you'll need to wear a new pair of gloves when providing immunization services to a new patient. Additionally, it's recommended that you schedule vaccine services at a period of time where your pharmacy is not busy. So either before or after you're open or even at off-peak hours to reduce the potential exposure of this high-risk patient to other members um, who visit your pharmacy. Ultimately, it's a patient-by-patient -patient and pharmacy-by-pharmacy -pharmacy assessment, but I hope these tips have helped you in terms of what to consider. Thank you.